What's up guys, it's Eric from Rare Candy and welcome back to the Recorded Tournament series and today I'm bringing you the top cut rounds of a recent League Cup I got to go attend in Wilmington, North Carolina at Cape Fear Games. So this is going to be one of the top 8 matches that I got to record and on the left we have Colin Yarbrough who's playing a very interesting deck he's playing. Uh, it's like a Zorark GX Gorgeist Rotom deck. All sorts of crazy stuff going on in this deck. Definitely wanted to make sure I recorded this thing. And over on the right, we have Duskmane Necrozma being played by uh, Steven Grissom. So it should be a little bit of an interesting match. Uh, you know, as far as I know, Steven's deck is kind of your straightforward Magnazone very, You know, things like Duskmane Necrozma in there, Magnazone to accelerate lots of energy. Uh, so we'll have to see if there's anything out of the ordinary that he plays, but I'm pretty sure it's just your your standard type of Duskmane uh, Magazone deck. But Colin's deck, on the other hand, like I've mentioned, is a little bit wackier. He has all of the Rotoms in there. I think he even plays Suda Widow and Counter Energy uh, to have a good fighting, uh, you know, attacker. So it's more like an anti-meta game deck. So you have Zorark GX to draw through your deck and discard your tool cards. Uh, that way your Rotoms can attack for free because they all have that ability. I believe it's like. If you have eight or more or nine or more tool cards in the discard, your rooms get to attack for free. So that's actually pretty big because uh, Colin does play the Fire Rotom in his deck as well. So with the Choice Band, the Fire Rotom will actually one-shot these Duskmane Necrozma. So that's going to be, uh, you know, something that's going to be, I think, a big factor in this matchup is if uh, can Colin actually get uh, the Fire Rotom up and going. But it looks like we're about to start, and I can't really tell what Colin is starting with. I do apologize about the glare right there, guys. Um, I don't believe it's an EX or anything. But here, Steven looks like just has an attach and a pass. That's pretty bad. And just, <laughs> I think he attached a dashing pouch and passed. Oh, so this is definitely not the best game at this point. Um... Yet another tool car is in Colin's hands. This is... Um, not going his way, you know, he plays a 4-4 Zoroark GX line, so you would think his deck would be pretty consistent, but uh, he does not have the best starter. Okay, so he is starting with that Suda Widow with that Watch and Learn attack. So honestly, it's a pretty good Pokemon in this match because Suda Widow, it's a fighting in Calderous, and you copy the attack your opponent used on their last turn. So actually a pretty good Pokemon in this matchup because uh, Steven's going to be doing things like Meteor Tempest to take one you know, big one hit knockouts. So Suda Widow actually a really good card in this matchup, but unfortunately he just hasn't had the best start to really make use of it or much of anything else. So uh, it looks like Steven is finally drawing out of this dead hand. He has a Bridget, so he's starting to get set up a little bit uh, more normally. So he's kind of putting Steven on a, um, you know, like a one to two turn clock here. So does he have a metal energy? Okay, so he does. So Colin has to get uh, he has to top deck something here, otherwise he just loses. But it's just another dashing pouch. And unfortunately, the Rotom deck is going to go down. So, I do apologize, guys. I was really excited to actually record this matchup because, uh, you know, Colin, along with myself and one other person, were actually all the top three seeds going into this uh, top cut. So, he's had a great day at, at this tournament up until this point. But unfortunately, the deck is just starting to stall out on him in this match. Uh, but luckily in top cut, it is best two out of three, so he will have two more games to come back into this. And like I said, he plays a 4-4 Zora Arc GX line, I'm pretty pretty sure so. In theory, his deck should be, you know, pretty consistent. You know, assuming he doesn't just open dead with a lot of tool cards in his hand, uh, he should be a little bit better. So let's see how this one's going to go. And so in the best two out of three uh, scenario two, whoever loses uh, each game gets to decide who goes first. So no doubt Colin is going to want to go first and maybe try to get set up before his opponent can. So let's see. I think he actually opens with a Zerua. And it looks like Steven's opening with a Duskamane uh, Necrozma GX. So pretty standard starts for both these players. So... Colin does have the first turn Bridget, so he's probably liking this setup much more than uh, last game. So let's see what he's going to opt to set up here. So the big thing he's going to look for, I think it's going to be Heat Rotom, maybe Suda Widow, and maybe Zerua. I think all those seem like good inclusions. He could opt to try to set up a Gorgeist because it can discard your tool cards for you. Um, but I'm not sure how much I like Gorgeist here, but it looks like he's just going for the aggro Zoroark route. 
uh, here. I, I guess that can be good. Uh, there's something to be said for that, just being able to draw through your deck. So maybe you think, you know, if I can just, you know, just start digging and grinding away through my deck, I'll be in a good spot. Uh, so I think that's okay. But here it looks like he's going to get down some tools and just pass. And so it looks like he attached, I think it's a burst balloon to the active Zerua. If that's the case, I'm actually not sure how much I like that because Steven's deck is the type of deck he doesn't really get to attack until turn two at the earliest. So I think that actually might have been a little bit of a waste of the bursting one because it does get discarded at the end of uh, you know Steven's turn here. So it's that tool card. Uh, if your opponent attacks into it, they take six damage counters if it's on your active Pokemon that gets attacked. So, um, you know, good card. Just I don't think right here it was the best uh potential use of it assuming it's a burst one like i said guys i do apologize for this square i did not realize it was going to be a problem whenever we set up the camera here so i'm going to do my best to make sure i'm commentating on the right cards here uh but similarly for for steven he's you know having a pretty good setup this game as well so no uh you know hopefully this won't turn into another game of players just draw passing so no one wants to see that so he does have dialga gx which actually can be a pretty big card in this match but i actually don't think uh, you know, Colin runs any sort of fairy type of attacker to deal with the Dialga. And Dialga is actually pretty good because Timeless GX is really good against these low HP Pokemon like Gorgeist and the Rotoms and all that stuff. So uh, I think that's definitely going to be a threat that Colin will probably have to target down at some point here. So let's see what else he's going to do. He does have a Metal Energy, so he's just going to opt to attach that to Dialga or to Duskmane. Okay, and the Burst Balloon, like I said, does get discarded. So like I said, really was not a big fan of the Burst Balloon attachment there. I think it would have been much better served for this turn. But here it looks like Colin's just going to play the end. So each player is going to shuffle up and draw equal to the amount of prize cards they have left. So they're both going to get a fresh hand of six at this point. So like I said, uh, wasn't a big fan of that Burst Balloon attachment. I think that would actually be a pretty big card to get down in anticipation of a Timeless GX from Dialga. Uh, that way you can still force Dialga to take damage whenever it uses its GX move, because I am assuming that is going to be the route that uh, Steven is going to try to go this game. Okay, but here it looks like Colin's starting to get some Zoroks online, so he's going to be able to start digging through his deck at a pretty good pace. But here he's going to trade away a Choice Ban, and normally these wouldn't be you know cards you'd want to get rid of, but in this matchup, or just with this deck in general, discarding your tool cards is actually good, because like I said, uh, with the Rotom cards, you can... Uh, Attack for free if you have, it's like 8 or 9 tools in your discard. Like I said, the exact number is eluding me at the moment, but something to that effect. Okay, but it looks like, looks like Colin's going to go for an Ultra Ball here. It looks like he's eyeing down Sudowoodo. I think that is an option. It looks like he might be going for another Zoroark GX. I think that's okay as well. Uh, you know, just being able to draw through your deck at breakneck speed is, you know, never a terrible thing. Um... So I'll have to see what he's, what he's going to do here. The only thing I would be worried about is anticipation of, like, if he gets, like, attacked turn two here by Steven with a Meteor Tempest. Uh, I think he would ideally like some sort of Pokemon to uh, have on the bench ready to go to retaliate. So maybe something like this would, would actually be pretty good. But let's see if Steven is that lucky. To have, you know, because a lot of times with these rare candy-based decks, you don't really have the stage two ready to go on the next turn. Sometimes you just have clunky hands where you can't get your evolutions out. So we'll see how this is going to go. Okay, I see a metal energy in his hand beyond that. It's really hard to tell. So it looks like he is committing some more energy to this dust wing. So that tells me he might actually have a way to get the Magnazone in play. Otherwise, I think just powering up Dialga. Ooh, but here he just a pass. So unfortunately, not the best turn from Steven, and I'm not really sure if I like that uh, attachment on the Dusk Mane here. I would prefer to see that come down on the Dialga just because I think it's a safe assumption that this Dusk Mane is going to get knocked out this turn. You know, all Steven has to do, or I'm sorry, all Colin has to do is get two more bench Pokemon in play, which is not a hard thing to do, and this uh, Dusk Mane is going to get knocked out. You know, granted, I'm sure he plays Mount Coronet, so he can get back those metal energies at different points in the game. But just in general, you know, if you don't have Magnazone in play, your attachments are pretty precious. But here we're going to see a trade. No basic Pokemon yet, so that's actually pretty scary. 
If he whiffs the knockout here, that would actually be pretty big. Uh, if he has a choice band, that could also uh, that could also work to, you know, help him take a knockout. But here he does bench the Soda Widow. That's going to be good, I believe. He still needs a choice band in order to take a knockout, but he does have the choice band, and he has a Gorgeist on the bench as well, kind of ready to go. Okay, so Colin is going to jump ahead this game, taking the first knockout. So let's see what Steven has to work with. He has the Dialga GX he's going to promote. I know he has a Magnezone in hand, but I don't know if he has the Rare Candy. I think he has another Magnemite as well. Okay, so he has a Magnemite. Uh, what else? So he has Dialga. So he has the Mount Cornet. Okay, so he will be able to get those energies back, like I mentioned before. But here he's just going to, I think, use Dialga's first attack. Let's him draw until he has six cards in hand. So definitely a slow game uh, for, for Steven. Had a pretty good first turn, but beyond that, hasn't had too much to work with. Uh, so now this actually might be a pretty big area of opportunity. If Colin can actually take a knockout with Gorgeist here, that would be huge. Uh, just because Dialga is a pretty good attacker in this matchup. So he's going to discard it yet again. Getting rid of one of the other Rotoms that's not quite as useful in this matchup. So it looks like he's going to get himself down a counter energy on Sudowoto in anticipation of something like a Meteor Tempest or even a Timeless GX. Uh, you know, Sudowoto could potentially copy at some point. So he's going to target down the Remoraid here. Okay. Not sure if I like that. I think I would have preferred to see uh, a knockout on Dialga, but I guess he didn't have the tools necessary to do it. So I guess uh, with that in mind, the uh, ticket knockout on the Remoraid isn't too bad. So here it looks like Steven's going to promote this uh, Dialga again. If he can get the, the Mags... Oh, and here he drew the Octillery. Uh, that is unfortunate uh, since his Remoraid just got knocked out. But here he's just going to scoop and go to the next game. Here he shows uh, calling, you know, I just drew the Octillery, man. And he took out my Remoraid. So unfortunately not the best game for Steven, you know. And like I said, it is a stage two deck. That is kind of the downfall of this Magnezone deck. Sometimes you just can't really get set up and get like the rare candy Magnezone combo going. Uh, but you know, you'd have to say, or you'd have to think if Colin, or I'm sorry, if Steven was able to get his Magnezone online, he would have been in a much better spot there. Um, but like I mentioned earlier, this is a best two out of three series. So Steven is going to have another chance to take the series here in game three. So I'm sure he is going to opt to go first. Uh, since he did lose that last one. So we'll have to see how this next game is going to go. Hopefully it's more like the second game and less like the first one in terms of how well each player is drawing. Uh, you know, just seeing both players draw past game one was not very fun. So we'll have to see how, uh, you know, how this one's going to go here. Alright, so let's see what they're going to opt to start with. We see, I believe it's the Frost Rotom in Colin's opening hand, but it looks like he opened with something else. I'm not sure what it was. And I did not see what Steven is starting with, but we'll find out just momentarily here. And they're debating something here. I'm not quite sure what. I don't know if time was called or something. I uh, guess not, but okay. He's actually starting with Pumpkin Boo. I think that's okay. And Steven's going to start with Dialga GX, which is actually a pretty good starter. You know, it's typically gets most of the attention for its timeless GX attack. But Dialga's first attack, I forget the name uh, at, the, at the time of filming, but just for a single metal energy, a draw until you have six cards. So actually, if you are unfortunate enough to start with your Dialga, you, just, you do still have kind of a good backup attack to lead the game with. So, pretty strong opening from Steven here. He has the Bridget in hand yet again. Doesn't even have to play Tapu Lele. Uh, it's that supporter card. Let's him get three uh, basic Pokemon out of his deck, put it on his bench. So, he has Double Magnemite, Duskmane, Remoraid. So, this is actually a really, really strong uh, first turn uh, from Steven here. So, we'll have to see how Colin is going to respond. No doubt he's going to want to see a Bridget of his own. That way, he can kind of keep up with the pace uh, of his opponent here. And I'm not sure what's in Colin's hand, but I actually would have potentially, you know, thought about starting with the Frost Rotom and just kind of let that get sacrificed while you're setting up because Gorgeist is actually a pretty good attacker. 
So it looks like he's going to discard a Cynthia and a Choice Band. So I'm assuming we'll probably see a Tapu Lele going for that first turn Bridget, like I mentioned. So let's see what he's going to opt for. He's already eyeing down a few Pokemon right now. So he does have Lele in the deck. Um, so he's probably just checking to see what all he has prize and just mulling over all of his different options uh, for this first turn Bridget here. So it looks like he's eyeing down Heat Rotom. Not sure if I like that just because... Um, well, well, at this point in the game, I should say. Just because Dialga is actually not weak to fire. And I think just maybe going the... Gorgeist route early on, or maybe throwing down the Soda Widow would be a little bit more reliable, unless he has a way to get a lot of tool cards in the discard very quickly here. So Heat Rotom, I think, is a card, like I said, I think more towards the mid-game is where it really starts to, uh, you know, get a lot of value, but we'll have to see how it's going to go. So he still has, you know, the two Zerua, DCE, so he has plenty of stuff to work with. So let's see what Steven is going to grab here. Going for the Octillery. Uh, has that nice ability. Abyssal Hand lets you draw until you have five cards. So that's definitely going to be a pretty big card for Steven throughout this match, especially in the late game if Colin ever tries to, you know, punish him with an end, put him at a low hand size. Octillery can always just draw him out of stuff like that. So he has Mount Coronet. And so he's probably going to use that Abyssal Hand ability. Let's see what he can get here. So we see a Skyla and a Magnazone. So he actually does have the turn to Magazone at his disposal if he does opt to go for it. So let's see. He also has a Guzma. He probably doesn't want to use that. But he's going to go for the Sky. Like I said, probably grabbing that rare candy. So this is an amazing start from Steven's deck. He's kind of running on all cylinders here. And like I said, we're going to have to see if this Rodan deck can keep up with the pace of this uh, Necrozma deck here. So here we're going to see the rare candy Magazone. And does Steven have enough energy to get the Timeless GX? That would actually be pretty crazy here. So he has three energy already. He needs two more. But he's, here he's just going to do uh, Dialga's first attack shred. Or, I'm sorry, first main attack, I guess. First attack that does damage. For three energy, does 80. And goes through any effects on your uh, you know, opponent's defending Pokemon. So here, Colin's going to use a Cynthia. He does have a Zoroark GX, so he is going to at least be able to get a hit in with his Zoroark here. And here we see a Frost Rotom hit the board. I'm not sure how much I like that. I don't know how good it's going to be here. Well, actually, I shouldn't say that because there's two different Water Rotoms. I forget which one is which, but one actually does, I think it's like 20 plus 20 more for every energy on your opponent's side of the field. So if the Frost one is the one that has that attack, then that's actually a pretty good Pokemon in this matchup. So here, Colin's going to discard, uh, looks like a Bridget, and a Dashing Pouch with some trades. So drawing through his deck a little bit here, he's going to be able to soften up this Dialga pretty well uh, with a Riotus beating this turn. Uh, the only thing he's going to have to watch out for is next turn. If Steven does... Uh, is able to power up like a Meteor Tempest, that could be pretty bad, or is able to do Timeless GX, uh, that will essentially allow Steven to one-shot his Zork because he can use Timeless GX, get another turn, and then finish it off with, with another attack. So, uh, really just depends on how well Steven draws here, but he has his Octillery already, so he, he can kind of dig through his deck here. Alright, so let's see how Steven is going to respond here. Both players have pretty good starts so far. Has a pretty big hand. I know he has a Guzma in there as well. So we see another Duskmane hit the board. I think that's fine. And here he's just going to dump his hand play Sycamore. Looks like he got rid of two Guzmas and an energy retrieval. It's unfortunate he had to get rid of the Guzmas, but nevertheless, uh, you know, he needs to get some more energy in play probably. So here he has the Professor's Lair, it's that item card, it lets you get two basic energies out of your deck, put them in your hand. That's pretty good because this will allow him the option of going for a Timeless GX, or he can attach these to a Duskmane Necrozma, uh, Retreat Dialga, and use Mount Coronet to get some energy back to finish powering up Duskmane. So I think that actually might be the better play here, uh, just because this Dialga is definitely in danger of being knocked out. So let's see which way he is going to, to go here. 
Okay, so it looks like he actually is going for the Timeless GX. I think that's an okay play as well because Dialga, um, you know, at the end of all this, he will have taken three prizes in, in total. So, that, so I actually kind of like this because even if Dialga gets knocked out after his second turn that he's going to get, uh, his prize trade is still pretty good here. So Thomas GX for you guys who are unfamiliar, it's that crazy GX move on Dialga. It takes, I think, three metal and a double color list as 150, and then you get another turn, which is wild. You know, 150 doesn't seem like the best uh, damage output, which I'd say is true a lot of the time. Uh, but you know what? It's not even that big a deal because the extra turn will allow you uh, the time you need to, uh, you know, finish off your opponent after your time was. So another thing he could potentially do here is if he gets a, another energy, he can just manually retreat this Dialga, get three energy on a Dusk main, and just use Claw Slash to do the remaining 60 damage needed to knock out the Zorark GX. I think I like that play the best. That way he saves his Dialga from being knocked out and giving up two prizes. So let's see what all Steven has. He has an Ultra Ball here. Going to get rid of a Mag Zone and a Rescue Stretcher. So let's see what he's trying to go for. Maybe grabbing a Magneton. Or just maybe thinning his hand uh, out. That way he can draw some cards with Abyssal Hand. I think that is a consideration as well. Um, but if he does play the Magneton, I would imagine we would see that. But Okay, so he's going to opt not to get anything. So like I, I'm kind of thinking he's probably just trying to play down his hand. That way he can make use of Abyssal Hand. Uh, maybe to draw some more energy to power up a Dusk Mane. He just needs a single energy. that Then he can retreat this Dialga. Use Mount Cornet to get two of the energies back as well. And does he? Okay, so he does get the metal energy. So, yep, Steven, like I said, he's going to try to preserve his dial good here. He's going to promote this Dusk Main. Uh, he's going to use Mount Coronet to get two energy back, then slap it right back down thanks to Magnazone. So, Colin, I think, needs to promote Heat Rotom here. That's going to be. Uh, not sure how much I like this. He really needs to promote this Heat Rotom uh, because that's going to be the way he can take care of this. Uh, this Dusk main in one hit. Because now, unfortunately, I mean, maybe he doesn't have enough tools in the discard pile, but that's really the only way I, I see him winning this game because Zorak just, just does not trade well with these uh, Dusk mains. Because next turn, you know, Steven can just use Mount Coronet, getting back that energy. But you know what? He, he could still manage this. Um, because he can retreat into the Rotom. So if he can get enough tools in there and get himself a Choice Band, he's actually going to be in fine shape. I think he actually has Choice Band in hand. So actually, if um, yeah, if Colin does have enough tools in there, just retreat this Zorark, slap down that Choice Band, and uh, take your knockout here. Because Zorark is just not a good attacker against Duskmane here. You're going to have to two-shot Duskmane with Zorark, whereas they're just going to one-shot you. So... Yeah, I think Colin just has to. He just doesn't have a way around that. Uh, like I said, it all just depends on how many tool cards he actually does have uh, in the discard pile at this point. I know he has uh, quite a few in there. I just can't tell exactly how many. And here, I would imagine if he had enough, he would just throw them down. But... So here, it looks like he's going to throw down the choice ban on this Dusk main. And it looks like, I think, I think Colin had six or seven in the discard, so maybe he was a little shy of fulfilling the, uh, the requirement that the Rotom had. Which is definitely unfortunate because now, I, I think Steven is just in too good of a situation because uh, he can definitely take a knockout on this Dusk main here. Or with this Dusk main, or if he has enough energy, he can just uh, attack with his fresh Dusk main as well. So I think one of the ways, so again, uh, Colin's Zork is going to get knocked out here, and then Steven's going to go down to just a single prize. So I think the only hope for Colin at this point is to just get out this, this uh, Heat Rotom, and then... and then just try to end your opponent and hope they can't draw into what they need, maybe Field Blower away this Mount Coronet. Or even just attack with Zora Arc GX again, just because 
Uh, Heat Rotom, I think, actually would get knocked out by Shred. I think it only has 80 hit points. It's hard to tell uh, from my, my vantage like angle right now. But here, looks like he did get an energy down on this other Dusk main. Here he's going to get an energy out of the discard pile, and he's going to be able to use Meteor Tempest here. So I think I see an Ultra Ball in Steven's hand. If I'm in his position, I would definitely play the Ultra Ball, thin out my hand a little bit just in case of that dreaded into one. Okay, so he does have the double call risk energy. Definitely think that's a good thing here. So he has a Lele, okay. And he has a couple field blowers actually left in the deck. So he definitely needs to play the end. And uh, definitely dig for a field blower as well. That way he can get rid of this Mount Corna. And also getting rid of the float stone would be pretty big here as well. So here he's just going to end him. So uh, unfortunately, this is a situation where Octillery is really going to put in a lot of work. It's going to prevent Steven from, you know, just kind of getting hit with an end of one and just losing without having much to work with. So, but nevertheless, I mean, he still has to draw into what he needs to take a return knockout on this Zor arc, which you never know might be difficult. But I, honestly, I think Steven's probably just a little too far ahead. Uh, you know, since Colin with that knockout with the Heat Rotom, I think that was like a pivotal turn. But here. I don't know. Uh, Colin does have the field bar, so he got rid of the float stone and the Mount Coronet. Both pretty big things. Here he's going to trade away a float stone of his own. Trading away a Zorark GX. And here we're going to see a Riotous Beating uh, for the knockout. So let's see if Steven is able to pull this off. So he has Rare Candy Magazine. Ugh. And a fresh hand of five after Abyssal Hand. So this is definitely not what Colin wants to see. Oh, I see a Mount Coronet. He just needs that and an energy from hand. And this uh, the Sword Arc GX will get knocked out. But here he has the energy retrieval as well. So Steven is going to take uh, the series against this crazy Gorgeist <laughs> Rotom deck or whatever it was. So uh, definitely a, a fun matchup for sure. Really glad that I was able to get uh, kind of an interesting deck like this Rotom deck on camera. Really cool to see players showing up and playing some interesting decks at this event. But yeah, guys, definitely stay tuned as well because I will have a top four match and the finals coming up. So definitely stay tuned whenever the, those videos go up. But as usual, feel free to like and subscribe. And if you can support this channel by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg, big shout out to all of our patrons over there, or by picking up something from our online store at rarecandytcg.com, it'd be greatly appreciated. But with that, I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you for the next one.